today, um, as I've shared with you, you know, ad nauseum, the hard, difficult times we've been going through. I just was, I was in my book, I was in my room kind of straightening my bookcase in there and um, I ran across all these books and I thought these are books that have helped me so much over the years, so I thought I would share some of them. Uh, now these first ones are going to be um, religious in nature, sort of, yeah, pretty much. Um, but books that I've just so, so enjoyed, okay? This book, uh, unbelievably, I found on vacation in Crested Butte, Colorado in some store years ago. I'm talking 20 years, 15 years ago. Um, and for some reason, I snatched it up. I don't remember what was going on in my life then, but I knew I was a worrier, always have been. And I'm not going to say always will be because I'm really working on that. And the funny thing is, is that I'm going through such a difficult time. But for some reason, this one is teaching me to let go and not worry about it, probably because it's so out of my control that that's what I have to do. Okay, it's called Trading Your Worry for Wonder. It's by Sherry Fuller, C-H-E-R-I. Um, you can still find it on the internet, on Amazon. I don't think it's in any bookstores. You could probably order it. Um, A Woman's Guide to Overcoming Anxiety. This book I've probably read 10 times or more. Um, I've given it away to people. I've bought copies and given it away to people. I've loaned this one out. It's just amazing. And um, it just really teaches you, I don't know, just so many things. And um, just some of the topics, some of the chapters. I'll go over. Um, the lights go on. I don't remember what that one was about. Uh, Every parent's worst nightmare, overcoming fears about our children. Uh, no money in the bank, overcoming fears about financial insecurity. Uh, knowing God in the sh snowstorms, overcoming how fear harms our relationships. Um, facing our fears head on, overcoming a fear of flying. That's when you're really afraid of something and you face it. Like if I really wanted to face one of my worst fears, I would let a mouse be um, within 20 feet of me. That's kind of what that one's talking about. Uh, but I don't care to get over that fear. I don't think I ever will. A tornado bag, overcoming childhood fears, things that might have happened to you when you were a child. Now, she was in a bad tornado as a child, and it was very traumatic for years. And then at the end, it really teaches you how to deal with these fears and, how, and, and sort of a little, um, I don't want to say mantra, but just a little exercise to go through in your mind, and it's the five P's for handling panic. And it's just so good. And if you'd like me to do a video where I kind of explain a lot of these things, I certainly will and go over the five P's with you. Oh my gosh, it's just so, it's just incredible. And there's even the last chapter I think is fearing, soaring with your talents, overcoming the fear of failure. Oh wait, there's more. When the worst happens, overcoming the fear of the uncontrollable. Um, either way you win, overcoming fears with health problems. Um, acceptance, the door to peace, how to live a lifestyle of praise turn, war, turns war, worry to wonder, and 10 ways to live the adventure, how to embrace change and follows, follow God's guidance. I've really flubbed this whole thing, but I'm not going to re-record it. This book's awesome. Trust me. If you want me to do an in-depth video just on this book, I would be happy to do that. This is another book that I got years ago. And it's called Traveling Light by Max Licato, I think is how you say his name. It kind of goes through the 23rd Psalms, phrase by phrase, and relates it to our time and our day now. And, oh, this is an incredible book. It's Releasing the Burden You Were Never Intended to Bear, a prom The Promises of Psalms 23. So good. Love the cover. Looks like Italy. And I highly recommend this book as well. Um, this book is old, really old, and uh, it was written by a woman that had great difficulties in her life, I think in the 1800s, I don't remember when, but a long time ago. Um, okay, she was born in 1832, okay? Anyway, it's called The Christian Secret of a Happy Life by Hannah Whitehall Smith. Um, you know, there's a lot of different covers for this book because it's been re-released many, many times, but it is awesome. Now, it's a little deep. It's real deep. Because the wording and the language, it's not exactly like ours, but it has been updated, I think. But anyway, fabulous book. Really, really 
good book to delve into the deeper things of the Lord and how to live a happy life. And yeah, it's good. And I mean, when I say happy, I don't mean happy like tra-la, you know, I just won the lottery. I mean, peace and inner joy that you should have all the time that I'm working on that. This book helped me more than, oh my gosh. I, okay. This book is by Ruth Graham. Yeah. Ruth Bell Graham. Billy Graham's wife wrote this book. And the, actually, yeah. Yeah. I was scared it was one of his daughters, but it is his wife that wrote this book. Um, Prodigals and Those Who Love Him. Words of encouragement for those who wait. When you have a child that's kind of, you know, not doing the way you think they should do, or you see them making mistakes in their life that are just going to be devastating to them later, and you just think it's never going to get better, it's never going to get better, it's never going to be, maybe they're in their teens, maybe they're in their 20s, maybe they're in their 30s, and you're still praying for that child, and you just think, oh my gosh, and it doesn't just apply to sons. Oh, it doesn't say sons, but I think of the prodigal son in the Bible when I saw this book. Anyway, long story short, my friend Deanne bought this for me and mailed it to me. It is so good. I can't recommend it highly enough. It will help you so much. And it's very interesting. The first part of the book is about famous, fam well, maybe not famous in the fact that you know their name, but it's stories of men of long, long ago, like way back. And the journey that God took, that they took off God's path and then got to God's path. It's amazing. It will, it will let you know that God is powerful and his will be done. And no matter how far one of your children may step away, there's always hope. So that's the first part of the book is men of ancient times, like that became different things, evangelists and different, you know, leaders of the faith and things and what they went through and how their mothers or their grandmothers were praying for them the whole time, okay? Even when they were doing really bad stuff. Then the middle of the book is about people today, kids today that have gone off the path. And that's super relatable, of course. And one of them is her grandson. And to read his story, oh my gosh. And there's another story in here that just you will just die when you read it. So good. And then the last part of the book is poems that were written by Ruth Graham Bell, Ruth Bell Graham, and different um, verses of scripture and things that just, I don't know. It, 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 they're written by different people, but, um, you know, it's just so good. It, this is such a good book. Um, if you find yourself praying for a kid, one of your children or grandchildren or even a friend's child, whatever, this is a great book. And one I would have never picked up. So thank you, Deanne. It meant a lot. And I'm going to read it again, I think, um, soon. Now, those are books to help you get through tough times, different kinds of tough times, okay? And a lot of part, uh, one good thing about when you're going through a really hard time, I think, is to get perspective. Try to get perspective. Not to say what's going with you is... Not to say what's going on with you is nothing, but perspective can help you a lot to say, okay, these people made it through, maybe I can too. And this book is a lot about perspective because this woman went through H-E double hockey sticks, if you know what I mean, horrible stuff. Um, and that turns me to this book. I've talked about it before. It's been released. It, uh, d it's doing really well. When Will the Heaven Begin? This is Deanne's daughter's, the book her daughter wrote about her son who died when he was 18 on Christmas Day, and um, yeah, uh, written by Allie Breedlove. This book really, you know, Deanne is uh, my closest friend from way back childhood, and um, I knew Ben was sick, of course, for his whole life, but, and we talked about it, but we didn't live near each other, um, and, like when we were kids, and we lived in the same town and lived next door to each other, and then, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, um, when you don't live by someone, even if they're your good friend, if you don't talk on the phone all the time, you don't know about the, everything that goes on in their day-to-day -day life. And I certainly didn't know everything that Deanne went through. I knew pockets of it. I knew big events, you know, when it got really bad, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this book will really put it in perspective. This, she lived this daily, knowing that her son, something could happen to him any minute of any day. And this book 
just, of course, gave me new insight. Such respect for my friend. Oh, my gosh. And such love and such... The whole family, actually, of course. The whole family. And his sister just... It's just a great book, and it will encourage you, if you're going through a tough time, to turn to the Lord. But it's mainly just the story of the day-to-dayness of what their family went through with a child with an illness like that um, in the family. So I recommend this book, of course. Again, I'm recommending it. This book is about to be made into a movie. And um, it's really good, and I read it in one sitting, and it's an incredible story. And without knowing a personal friend whose son had felt like had had a vision of heaven, this book would have seemed a little crazy. I believe every word of it. And it's called Heaven is for Real. I saw the previews the other night when my daughter and I went to the movie, crying from the moment the preview started because it just went, oh. and I believe that we are in the um, end times of... <laughs> on God's timetable. I believe we're getting very close to revelation and things that happen. I think that's why these kinds of books are coming out because I think it is just, um, I think God has given more and more people visions of heaven to pass the word on that heaven is for real. And that's this book and the little five-year-old, I think he was four or five, when he died on the table, went to heaven, saw things, saw people, and then started talking about it later to his family. It, I have chills right now. I'm going to reread this before the movie comes out in a couple of weeks. I think it comes out near Easter. Another book I recommend just because it's fascinating and awesome and interesting, and I think you'll like it. Now, two books that have nothing to do with religion or anything, like not at all. Uh, this is a book I have read. I think I read this book every single summer. It's one of my favorites. I don't know why. It's just awesome. And it's just called Out, Outer Banks by Ann Rivers. I don't know how to spell her, say her last name, S-I-D-D-O-N-S. -D -D -O I know she's written a lot of books. And I had a lot more, if you want me to go over some more um, fiction books that I really enjoy, I certainly will. But this is one that just sticks out as a favorite summer read. And it takes some twists and turns that you'll never expect. It's old. It's real old. I mean, it's even, look at, look how old it is. It's yellowed inside the color cover. I'll see when it was first copyrighted or first published. 1991. Yeah. That doesn't sound that old to me, but it's 20 years old. Gosh, time flies. This book, my daughter, my, my daughter, my sister-in-law, Lori, I think, I think I found it in her bookcase, and she said, take it. Actually, did she say take it, or did I just take it because I was reading it? I'll bring it back to you, Lori, if that was the case. Oh, I know. I was sleeping out in the guest house, and I found this book on a shelf, and it's called Suck Your Stomach In and Put Some Color On, What Southern Mamas Tell Their Daughters That the Rest of Y'all Should Know Too, by Shelley Rushing Tomlinson, um, T-O-M-L-I-N-S-O-N such a hilarious book. I could hear my grandmother, my mother, my aunts, my cousins, all my family from Louisiana are in this book in one way or another. All the things that they have said in this book, I have heard. It's hysterical. If you weren't raised in the South, I think everybody's heard most of these sayings and different things, but maybe not. I just grew up in the South, so I totally related to this book. It is hysterical. It is so funny. I was dying. Tears. Tears. I was dying laughing. So, this is a great book if you just want to escape and read some funny, funny, hilarious stuff about the South. I mean, um, I'm going to tan their little hides. My mother used to say, I'm going to tan your hide. Um, you know, you don't say pregnant. You say, well, there were different words. I don't know. It's really funny. Um, it's great. So, that's it. Lunch is ready. I can see my husband getting it together. So I'm going to go now. But before the, I go, I'm going to say this. I had a folder in my house full of all these YouTube ideas I was going to do in the future. I've had this folder for about a year and a half. I got it down today to do some videos, and now I can't find it. And you know what was in the folder? All of the things that y'all have requested that I do a video on. 
So I'm so embarrassed to ask you one more time, if you have any kind of request of anything you'd like me to do a video on, please leave it in the comments below. If you have any great books, leave them in the comments below. If you've read any of these books, leave, them, leave it in the comments below of uh, what you thought about it. And um, yeah, that's it for today, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.